Now, if we can agree that the Baroque period began around 1600, more or less everything that was before that that can still be considered an orchestra or an ensemble of anything, we should be calling Renaissance. And the rules of this are clawed very much to the rules of writing for mixed voices. Um, the, it was only in the Baroque time that we began to use instruments chorally, so there were several string instruments playing the same line. And uh, up till that time, virtually every instrument would be playing just its own line. And um, it, this line would be so similar to the vocal lines that were being written at the time, that if we just concentrate now on writing for choir, we should have done quite a good job in talking about Renaissance style. The first thing we do, I'm going to take this same Christmas carol, and I'm just going to do, without really changing the harmonies very much, just do a very, very simple harmonization for four voices. And this is what we call the homophonic style. This means that all four voices are singing together. The, um, they, they, obviously, they sing different parts, but the parts are arranged so as to fit, the, so that they're all singing the words at the same time. Quite the most important aspect of Renaissance style is polyphony or counterpoint, working so that the voices have their own independent lines, that they have maybe some imitation between the lines, but uh, they are all perfectly independent of one another, but of course they have to fit the same harmony. So to start, if you want to do this type of exercise, do have a very clear idea harmonically where you're, where you're going to be going, otherwise you'll get into awful knots. And then see how much you can mess around with this. You'll need to write good bass lines. You'll need to write not such interesting voices maybe in the middle. But um, in this version, I've chosen to put the melody in the tenor part and then to make the others just imitate this as much as possible. The basic rules of counterpoint, some of you may have been bugged with this if you were studied music at university and decided this is where you get off the bus, but we have to remember, because in this style it's very important, parallel octaves, parallel fifths, none of the composers of this period ever did this, quite simply because it sounds vulgar. You know? um, all right, vulgarity can be very nice for certain styles of music, but in this style it just isn't, it isn't, it isn't on. Then we have to be sure that if, in a, if we have a perfect cadence, that the leading note should rise to the tonic after this. Um, the seventh chords are as good as invisible. And maybe a passing note uh, might, might just be something looking like a dominant seventh. But otherwise, um, these uh, again, the composers of this period were avoiding this. So if you can do all of these things, you'll possibly produce something that sounds like a good parody. That's not necessarily my aim here, but I'm just using the stylistic elements uh, in order to show how the sort of thing you can do, do for a choir in this type of arrangement. <laughs> style, it's a good idea to make the voice parts as interesting as possible, but obviously you won't have as much opportunity as when you're writing in a free counterpoint style. Uh, that's all for now. It's worth mastering this type of technique because even the composers of the Romantic period, they all learnt their basic harmony, first of all, from Palestrina. And it's amazing how often you see that influence in there, including the strict avoidance of parallel fifths and octaves quite late in the music in music history that's all for now